Yo, what's up, Joiners? B here, and I want to talk to you guys about something involving something that hit close to home for me, which I was not ready for, and also really significant drone incidents that influence drone law. Let's get right into it. I live in LA, and the event that hit close to me, home to me on December 4th of this year at 7.15 p.m. over the city of LA, downtown LA, is that a drone struck a news helicopter. And that news helicopter was the ABC7 uh, helicopter, which just got hit by a drone. They were flying, they got hit, they heard a boom, they thought it might have been a bird. It obviously wasn't a bird because they did an emergency landing to find out that part of the helicopter was damaged. There was like small holes and dents, which wouldn't come from a bird. Obviously, you normally just see like blood and feathers. Um, but they found that the, the helicopter had been hit by a drone. And then they, of course, since they're a news organization, decided to make it a news story. And now it's getting more and more media attention, which in my experiences had led to more and more drone laws. And that got me to thinking, what other instances have happened that have heavily influenced drone law in drone history? So I did a little bit of research to be able to look into that and also look into other drone strikes that have happened. So here we go. So first I wanna look at three verified drone strikes. That's a drone striking a manned aircraft and what we can learn from them. Now I'm saying verified because there's a lot of other times that drones have been blamed for hitting things, but it could not be proven. So these are the, the verified drone strikes that obviously something was going on and we're gonna just break it down. So the first one is gonna be from September 21st, 2017 with a Black Hawk military helicopter flying over New York. There's actually two Black Hawk military helicopters that were flying and one of them was struck by a drone. It hit a drone. Um, I don't know what kind of drone it was because they don't either, but they do know that the, uh, the helicopter was damaged. They did an emergency landing of both helicopters to see what happened, to see if everything was okay. Everything ended up being okay. They were able to land safely. But what they, did able, what they were able to find out is that, well, somebody was breaking drone laws. There was a drone pilot who was flying more than two and a half miles away from where he was and could not see the drone anymore. He never saw the helicopters, had no idea he was going to hit them, and he did. And that's why it's really important that you stay within visual line of sight while you're flying your drone because you need to be able to see what obstacles not only are coming that you're hit, gonna hit, but also what might hit you. Because normally manned aircraft are flying way faster than you and you need to try to avoid them instead of think people think they're gonna run into an airplane. Like, no, 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 the airplane runs into you. Up next, don't you know, we're going up to Canada. And in Canada, we have in the 12th of October, 2017, there was a Beach King Air A100, which is a small like jet, from Skyjet Aviation that collided with the UAV that hit it on its wing. Yes, this is my wing. Hit it on its wing, the, the plane, uh, they knew it struck, they could hear it, it created a small hole in the wing and they were able to land it safely. Now on this particular instance, what can we learn from this? Well, we can learn that this person, whoever it was, was flying at an altitude they had no business flying at. They were struck at 1,500 feet, which is more than four times the allowed height while flying in Canada during that time. If you continue to do things like that, or if people continue to do things while they're breaking the laws, and they're gonna have to figure out better ways to enforce them, which makes life harder for all of us. So please understand your local laws, ordinances, or even the laws of your country so that we don't have instances like this. I know it was a few years ago, but obviously still relevant because it was only a couple years ago. So please, please, please mind your laws. Moving on to the 10th of August, 2018, we have one more verified strike. This one actually happened in Idaho, specifically Driggs, Idaho. There was a hot air balloon that was struck by a drone. Now this hot air balloon was not damaged even in the slightest, but I just thought this was really funny that they even reported it because it's like nothing happened except for the drone just got completely demolished. And, like, and then the, uh, the pilot of the balloon was just like, uh, excuse me, the airman for the balloon decided that he needed to report that to the FAA, so he did. You can hit hot air balloons, guys, and they will. the hot air balloon's gonna win. That's just what it comes down to. So now I wanna talk to you guys about a few instances of drone incidents where they helped influence the drone laws that we have today. And obviously, most people are responsible drone pilots, but it's the select few that make sure that we have all the laws that we do. Um, the first one is actually hitting extremely close to my, my home home, because uh, this is where my father and grandfather are from, is Dinwiddie County, Virginia, which you probably have never heard of because it's extremely small, but this goes way back to 2013, and there was a bull riding festival that had a drone flying over it, and the drone crashed literally into the crowd and caused a bunch of minor injuries. Now, I'm not for sure if this had anything to do with the laws that inv involve flying over people, but it seems like it might have been a foundational step towards saying that maybe drones shouldn't be flying over people without the proper certifications or the secondary precautions and uh, a secondary battery or a parachute or something because the drone just fell into a crowd of people because it was flying over a crowd of people. And obviously the laws now say that we don't fly over uh, crowds of people. We don't fly over people that aren't involved with what we do. So 
this could have influenced it. I just had to talk about it because it's extremely close to like my family's home in this little county that you would never expect to see this. And it's one of the only times that I found anything reported from before 2015. 2015 was a tough year for drones, guys. We're gonna get into that. But in tw January 2015, there was a person who crashed a drone into the lawn of the White House. And he was drunk. He was drunk. He literally flew his drone drunk into the White House lawn. Um, and now there's a TFR over anywhere in Washington, D.C. that drones just aren't allowed to fly anywhere near the city, which I believe this is a direct reaction to that. They're like, oh, wow, these drones could get to the White House, which means they could get to the president, which means this is a security concern. No mas. And now nobody can fly in Washington, D.C. whatsoever. Thank you, drunk guy who flew into the White House lawn. You did, uh, you you did us all good. Nobody flies in D.C. now. In June 2015, there was a woman watching the Pride Parade in Seattle and a, a drone fell out of the sky and hit her on the head and knocked her unconscious. Wow. I mean, this may, the Dinwiddie County thing may have influenced the flying over people one, but having a drone knock someone unconscious, let's also just look at the statistic probability of that, of that occurring is ridiculous, but it did. So the man responsible for flying this drone and, and knocking this woman unconscious and injuring one other person, his name is Paul M. Skinner, and he was actually convicted of uh, reckless endangerment and it got a gross misdemeanor, which gave him 30 days in jail and a $500 fine. The prosecutor was going for 90 days in jail, but the judge felt to go light on him because obviously he wasn't done on purpose. And it just, that really sucks for him. But for us, the thing we learn is that, you know, you have to take responsibility for what it is you are doing. You are you could be endangering the public and you could suffer the consequences for it as a drone pilot. So he shouldn't have been flying over the parade. He shouldn't have been flying over those people. And he lost control of the drone, literally knocked somebody out. And now he has to spend 30 days of his time and $500 on this, so that's just what it is. Another 2015 story, and this one is also very, very famous. In July 2015, there was wildfires in Southern California, which as we all know, can happen occasionally, and there was a huge suppression effort going across from um, LA. The firefighters were having planes and helicopters drop all kind of flame retardants and water to be able to stop that, but five drones were in the air at the same time as the fire, which forced for safety reasons to land all of the, all of the aircraft fighting the fire, which obviously endangers public safety, endangers so much. But they had to land them because if they were to run into a bunch of drones and the plane or the helicopter crashes, that could be more of a danger than the fire itself. So they had to land and we lost a lot of valuable time in fighting these fires. So that influenced a brand new set of laws that made it so that all flying anywhere near any kind of wildfires that are being suppressed is completely illegal. And that is the new law. And it became a huge public, a public thing where everybody it was all over the news. And now I hope that every drone pilot knows that you're not supposed to do that. Please don't do that. May 2017, there was a GoPro Karma, which I know, my favorite drone, to make fun of. In Petro Park, San Diego, which is a baseball field, uh, it, a GoPro Karma crashed, because that's what they do. And it landed into an empty seat, but what happened from there is that there's a TFR over every single baseball game, henceforth. So you're never allowed to fly anywhere near MLB games, which they actually put over every single sports event there is. There's TFRs for all of them now. If you don't know what a TFR is, it's a temporary, temporary flight restriction, which makes it so that you are not supposed to fly in that area at all. Most DJI drones make it so that you cannot even take off or fly into a TFR. And if you have a drone that doesn't have that geofencing capability on it, you're supposed to be aware as a pilot, recreational or commercial, be aware of that and not fly into those kind of spaces. Okay, and last but not least, we'll end on one that I thought was just kind of funny. In May of 2017, there was a Golden State Race uh, series in California, which is a cyclist race, like bicycles. And there was a guy who was filming it. Um, I don't know if he was working directly for uh, the race or not, but he pretty much, he collided with a tree. So like he ran his run into a tree, it spun out of control after hitting the tree and then landed into the cyclist, like ran it directly into the cyclist, got tangled up in one of the cyclist's front tire and pretty much stopped the front wheel and made it so he goes head over like just literally just stumbled, like fell over his handlebars and obviously didn't win the race after that, you know, messed up his bike, messed up his helmet. The drone pilot did not get prosecuted for this, so lucky him. Apparently he offered the cyclist a new helmet and a front wheel. It's really nice of him. Um, I just thought that was funny. That didn't change any laws, but wow, like dude, into a tree? All right, Joiners, thank you so much for checking out this video. Obviously, if you wanna argue with me about whatever I was just talking about, I'm here for it. Let's go get it in in the comments. If you wanna see more drone-like videos, we got them up here because that's what we do, or we have the greatest drone video that's ever happened in the sense of describing this channel. Make sure you guys support what I'm doing by being here and doing this research by going ahead and subscribing. And as always, make sure you stay fly.